All right, so in this test, what we have is we have a Pine phone and we have a Pixel 3, a Google Pixel 3. Both of these are running Ubuntu Touch, um, and we're going to do a boot test to see which one of them boot up faster. Um, just a, a note, um, the Google Pixel 3 actually has to go through uh, a different boot cycle than the Pine phone. The Pine phone should boot directly into Ubuntu Touch, where the Google Pixel's got to go through the, the boot lock thing that it does, and you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. Um, so we're going to try, I've got the power button here and the power button here. I'm going to try to turn both these guys on at the same time. All right, so now you can see what I'm talking about with the, the booting process here on the Pine phone. And so it's got to go through, because this used to be a Google Pixel 3 running Android, so it's got to go through a little bit different process. So we're on the Ubuntu boot screen faster on the Pine phone because it doesn't have to go through the, the other process. And you can see the screen on the Pixel is a, a lot nicer screen. Um, and you can see that it booted a lot faster. So even though the, the Pixel 3 is a pretty old phone, um, the Pine phone is taking quite a while to boot up. So there the Pine phone has booted. So in that respect, um, we've got the same, or, you know, we've got a, a little example here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to log in to both of these guys. So I'm going to do All right, so we're logged into both of the phones. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do now is let's open up the app uh, program on both of them just, just to see how quickly they open. All right, and this is another problem on the on the uh, Pine phone that I've got to figure out is it's not getting on my wireless connection. So I'm going to stop the video for a second and fix that problem so we can actually get a little bit better test here. Okay, so we have the uh, the uh, Pine phone on the internet now. So what we're going to do again is we're going to open up the app drawer or the app uh, application where we can go and find applications so I want to one, one of the things that I'm kind of trying to figure out the the pine phone is actually a completely open source uh, phone um, it is uh, really cool because you can you can take the back off of it you can replace the battery um, in my case I had a, a bad motherboard and I actually replaced the whole motherboard in the in the phone and got it going again. So it's it's a really cool concept. However, in the current uh, phase of the process, um, it it is a very slow uh, phone compared to the, for example, a Pixel Three, and it's also a little bit more expensive than you can find a Pixel Three. Uh, phone to load Ubuntu Touch on, so it, it's th these things drive me crazy. With the they don't seem to give you any any uh, warning that they're fixing to turn themselves off. And actually, it looks like this thing has just literally turned itself off. Um, so right now the pine phone running ubuntu touch and this is specific to ubuntu touch um the battery life on this thing is horrendous it i mean it literally won't last you a quarter of a day um without being charged so it's far from being able to be a driver a daily driver um now i don't know what just happened because it seems to have just completely shut itself off so i'm rebooting it i don't know why it why it did what it did there i haven't had that kind of a 
issue with it before, so I'm not quite sure why it shut down like that. Um, however, what, what I was getting at is the, the Pixel 3 is a lot better built phone um, for anybody that's actually wanting to do this for, uh, you know, to, to use as a daily driver. It has a, a lot better camera on it. Um, it's a lot faster. And it, to be honest, it's a lot better built. Now, you can't replace the battery. It's not open source. You know, there, there's huge downsides to it as well. But just for the sake of running Ubuntu Touch as a daily driver, I definitely would not recommend doing it on a uh, Pine phone other than just for development reasons because the camera on this phone is terrible. It, it's ap actually worse than terrible. It's useless. Um, and the processor is a lot slower than what it is on the Pixel 3. It has less disk space. Um, there just there really is no upside to a Pine phone other than the fact that it is open source and it's kind of cool. Um, but anybody that's interested in getting into this and starting to test apps and test your ability to actually use this phone every day, I would much more uh, highly recommend getting a Pixel 3 or some other uh, like phone um, to run Ubuntu Touch on because it's a, a lot faster. This is kind of irritating with the constant shutting off. Um, so, um, you know, you have that to contend with. Um, now, uh, I'll show a couple user interface things with Ubuntu Touch um, that's, that are kind of cool. Um, now, this one on, on the Pine phone, for whatever reason, the menu there, well, I don't know what it's doing here. So, if I slide, let me try this again. If I slide a little bit, and I can do this on both both sides. You can see it opens up a menu and you can add more and more things to this menu if you want to. If I slide back to the left, it'll close that menu. If I slide all the way over, it'll actually open the app drawer. Now I can get there as well doing this uh, menu down here at the bottom. But if I just slide from left to right all the way across, it opens up the, the slider for all of my apps. And it does it on, on both. If I slide from the right just a little bit, and, and this this won't, let me, let me do this. Let's, uh, let's go over here. Well, well and this is, this is kind of a, an example of a problem because I'm trying to open the menu and it's actually um, trying to do something in this application that's up. Um, one of the, probably my least favorite thing about Ubuntu Touch is this slide drawer because I, I find myself, you know, sitting here, see, just sitting here multiple times trying to get that thing to open. Um, and it, so I, I really am not a fan of this slide thing to open the applications. It's, I mean, it's functional and it, and it works. I just wish that it, it was a little bit more intuitive for I mean, see, I, I'm just, I'm doing things on the phone that I don't really want to do because it's interpreting my little slide as being, you know, what it's not. So that's something that you have to contend with, but I'm going to open up the terminal app. And this is probably my favorite thing is having an actual Linux phone on my, on my phone. Um, so it's it's really cool to be able to log into the data center with with your phone instead of having to carry a computer around with you. Um, but so what I was trying to get at a minute ago is so now if I do a, a little swipe, I'm not going all the way across the screen. I'm just doing a little swipe here on the left. You'll notice that it goes back to the previous application so I can flip from one application to the other just by doing a little a little swipe here. Now, if I swipe all the way across, it brings up a list of applications that are open. I can flip through them, select the one that I want to open, or I can actually swipe up and get rid of that application. So it gives me the ability to open and close applications pretty easily. Now, again, you, you kind of have to get used to this drawer sliding open because depending on the, the application and stuff that you have open, 
it you may end up executing something in here instead of actually opening see i, I just did it again um so so that's kind of the only literally when I, I because i'm actually using this phone every day um i'm working on replacing my iphone with this phone and i'm to be honest with you i'm not unhappy with using this thing it's actually very cool to have linux in my pocket instead of ios so i'm very excited about doing this but the the sliding drawer thing i just did it again the the sliding drawer thing over here is just it is a constant problem that I have with, with the phone. Uh, another kind of a downside to it is when the phone is off and I want to wake the phone up, I can't touch it. Um, I have to actually push the power button and then I have to swipe to, to actually get it to ask me for my password. So it's, which th that latter part is not a big deal, but it's, it, I wish sometimes that I could just tap it and, and have it wake up. Um, sometimes I just want to see what time it is and, you know, having to hit the power button all the time is kind of a pain. But my biggest absolute uh, problem with, with the phone is the fact that th this drawer, you know, and I'm not doing this on purpose. I'm, I'm actually trying to open the drawer and see, I, I did it again. So I don't know if there's like some trick to getting that drawer to open every time without executing things on the screen but but that is literally my my main problem with ubuntu touch um, everything else works really well i haven't had too many problems with it i mean there's there's some you know little things like for example your contacts when you're going into your contacts you don't have the ability to add notes to your contacts uh, which is a huge downside for me because I, I add notes to almost every contact to remind myself of where I met the person and who they are. Um, so I, you know, I, I've lost that capability. Um, but hopefully that kind of stuff is going to get added. Um, and and then the other, you know, probably the the biggest problem that I have with the Ubuntu Touch and really the entire experience on Linux uh, at the moment, and I'm hoping that you know some of this will get corrected here because um, it really needs to is the fact that there are oh my god this is just annoying so let me get rid of the application so I can get over here um, so this is for example a driving application kind of like Google Earth um, where I can go in and get directions and and do things um, these programs are getting their uh, database from OpenStreetMaps, um, which is a an online community. I highly recommend everybody go get an account on there and start mapping out your neighborhood. I mean, if you if you did nothing but just map out your neighborhood, um, it would be massively helpful. Um, but the it's an open source community that is actually going through and mapping all the houses and roads and driveways and all that kind of stuff. So instead of using Google Earth or or Apple Maps, um, you can actually have an open source mapping program that that you're using. The problem is is the programs themselves that are running in Linux um, they they really need a lot of work. Uh, most of them don't work at all. The ones that do work only work port partially. So you know being able to use this to go to take get directions to go somewhere is really my biggest downside other than that i have you know all of the applications that i use on a daily basis are all on here i'm using it to call, make calls um i'm you know i'm, I'm just i'm really happy with this phone I, I i there aren't a lot of downsides to it my the big downside right now is navigation and and i'm you know, participating on the on the mapping program site on OpenStreetMaps to to map out my area at least, and and maybe you know get get more involved in that community. Um, but the the mapping software needs needs to be uh, taken a look at in a serious way if Linux is ever going to to replace or you know give somebody the ability to replace their iPhone or their Android.